Countdown. Tahniah. Siaran langsung ini dibawakan khas kepada anda oleh Akademi YouTuber Malaysia. Sebuah inisiatif EDD Malaysia dan Kelab Guru Malaysia. Tumbukan perhatian anda. Siaran langsung akan bermula sebentar lagi. Link sijil akan diberikan di hujung siaran ini. Pastikan diisi dalam tempoh yang ditetapkan. Terima kasih. Assalamualaikum dan salam sejahtera kepada semua para guru, para pensyarah dan para pelajar sekalian. Selamat datang ke Pusat Tuition Academy YouTuber usaha sama EDD Malaysia dan Kelab Guru Malaysia. Sebelum kita mulakan kelas pada malam ini, saya ingin menjemput saudara Irfan untuk memulakan bacaan doa. Dipersilakan. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah wabil alamin wassalatu wassalamu ala ashrafil anbiya wal mursalin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajmain. Allahumma afta' alaina hikmataka wa ansyur alaina min hazaini rahmatika ya alhamma rahimin. Rabbi syuhli suri wa yasin li amri wa ahlul udata milisani yafkahu kawli. Amin. Ya Rabbal alamin. Okey, terima kasih kepada saudara Irfan. Jadi apa khabar semua pelajar-pelajar sekian? Saya harap semua pelajar-pelajar telah pun bersedia untuk menduduki menghadapi peperiksaan PSPM untuk subjek perakaunan pada besok pagi. Jadi dengan saya harapkan semua pelajar dapat memanfaatkan ilmu yang saya berikan pada malam ini. Jadi saya perkenalkan saya Cikgu Yati dari Kolej Menterukasi Negeri Sembilan selaku moderator dan juga presenter pada malam ini dan saya sedang bersiaran secara langsung dari Cikgu Yati Channel. Pada malam ini kita sekali lagi berjumpa untuk kelas tuition online academy YouTuber dan pada malam ini kita akan ikuti kelas ulang kaji PSPM semester 1 untuk matrikulasi AA015 accounting uh, financial accounting. Okay. Diminta sesiapa pelajar-pelajar yang belum subscribe, silalah tekan butang subscribe sebagai tanda sokongan anda semua kepada saya. Apabila anda menekan butang subscribe, anda akan dapat new notification apabila saya menerbitkan video-video baru. Okey, saya ingatkan juga kepada pelajar-pelajar semua, link CJ penyertaan dan kod SS akan diberikan di penghujung kelas pada malam ini. Jadi sila beri perhatian sebab link tersebut akan tamat tempoh setengah jam selepas live. Jadi kepada semua pelajar sekian sila berikan tumpuan dan fokus pada isi pelajaran dan insya Allah kelas kita pada malam ini dapat dimanfaatkan sepenuhnya para pelajar, kepada para pelajar. Uh, Irfan awak nak temankan ke nak ni? Boleh temankan? Irfan. Hmm, boleh. Boleh pun. Okay. Alright. Thank you. So kita nak mulakan ya. Okay. Ni dia ya. So I just want to introduce myself. Now you want to start the class already. My name. Okay. This is my bio data, Norhayati Binti Ismail, and I am teaching in College Metroclasi Negeri Sembilan, and teaching experience is 26 years, where 15 years in the school and 11 years in matriculation. So don't forget to visit my channel, Cikgu Yati Channel. Okay. And this is my teammate, Madam Asma Zatul Yusfiziati, Binti Muhammad Yusuf, or Madam Fizi, teaching in College Metroclasi Negeri Sembilan, and her teaching experience is 17 years. And all of you can visit her channel, Madam Fizi 
channel. And this is the collaboration team pre-university, the combination of STPM and matriculation. And this is mathematics T team. The members are teacher I teacher Im, teacher Eileen, and Che Guzana. And the leader is teacher Im. And this is the biology team. The members are Chegu Faiza, Chegu Fatiha, and Chegu Naini. And the leader is Chegu Faiza. And this is the collaboration of pre university that consists of STPM and matriculation. And this one is chemistry team. The members are Chegu Shahnon, Chegu Vivilau, Chegu Mawar, and Teacher Tang. Okay. And this is, we are the members of Academy YouTuber. And this is the portal of Academy YouTuber. So don't forget to visit the portal Academy YouTuber, www dot academy youtuber dot com and now we want to start our revision for PSPM based on past year question so now I just want to focus for chapter 9 accounting for non-current asset chapter 10 for liabilities and chapter 11 for incomplete record and this is the question one. So pay attention. Okay, you are given the question. Question 1A. Machinery was purchased for 10000 by cash. The following costs were incurred. Okay. The item transportation costs are M400. Installation costs are M1200. Yearly premium insurance, 250 and repair broken down due negligence during installation, RM200. You are required to calculate cost of the machinery. So what is the answer? Okay, I'll show you the answer. So the answer, purchase price, 10000 Transportation cost 400, installation cost 1200, and the total cost for machinery is 11,600. Okay, you can find out this figure yearly premium insurance that one categorized as revenue expenditure, not included when you calculate for the cost of machinery. And this one, installation cost, known as capital expenditure. And the capital expenditure will increase the value of asset. And the first time when we purchase the asset, we must include capital expenditure, for example, installation cost, transportation cost, that one we have to include to calculate the cost of machinery. And the last one, repair broken down due negligence during installation. This amount, 200, is the responsibility of the supplier. That one is under warranty. The supplier should, should make a payment for the repair. So we should not include the amount of 200 in the total cost. So we just include for capital expenditure only. The next question, you are required to prepare the journal entry. Okay, we have made for the payment for insurance every year. So we have to record in the journal entry, debit, machinery, because we purchased the machinery, Debit prepaid insurance. We have to pay every year 
for the insurance and the amount the total that we have to pay is 11,850 and this amount should not be included that one is the responsibility of the supplier not the company okay so the narration to record the purchase of machinery and the premium insurance okay this one relate to to calculate cost of the fixed asset we must include the capital expenditure now we go on to the question number two okay before you answer the question you must identify the item the most important item so i just highlight a few items that you must recognize okay number one repersia enterprise purchase a machine rm 9000 91000 that one is the cost of machine and this is the date of purchase the machine has useful life seven years so you just underline seven years years and the residual value rm7000 what method yes we are using straight line method you just highlight the important items in the question. The depreciation expense recorded in full for the year of purchase and not recorded in the year of disposal. So this is we are using the yearly basis and the accounting period ends at 31st December. This is the accounting period because we are going to calculate depreciation every year at the end of the accounting period. Now, you are required to generalize the disposal and purchase of machine under each of the following situations. So there are many situations. Number one, sold machine for 72,000 in October 2017. So when you want to calculate depreciation, you must calculate starting from 2014, 2015, 2016, and for 2017, not included or not recorded so we have to record only three years because we are following the yearly basis the yearly basis means that full for the year of purchase and not recorded in the year of disposal so we can calculate using the formula and this is the formula Number one, this is the cost of asset less useful life, no, 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 less residual value divided by useful life. And we have to multiply by three years. Three years, that means we have to calculate starting from 2014, 2015, and 2016 only. So we have three years. So it is very important for you to calculate the correct amount for accumulated depreciation. So we have to calculate the depreciation, the gain or disposal, the gain or loss on disposal by using the formula. So this one represents for cash received less book value. This is the amount book value. 91,000 less accumulated depreciation. And this is the calculation that you get 17,000. And when you want to prepare the journal entry, this is the step that you have to follow. The first step, we must remove the old machine. 
So you must record in the credit side and the machine will decrease. So this is the first step. We must record in the credit side. Number two, we must record the accumulated depreciation. We must remove the accumulated depreciation for old machine. Number three, we must record for cash receipt. So debit in the journal entry and the missing figure is gain on disposal. You add for the debit side and the credit side and you will find out the missing figure is 17,000 in the credit side. That one is gain on disposal. Okay. Now, this is the working for question one. And now we go on to the next question. Sold the machine for 28,000 in September 2018. So there are four years. We have to calculate starting from 2014. 2015, 2016, and 2017. And for the year of disposal, 2018 not included or no depreciation for 2018. So we have four years when you want to calculate accumulated depreciation. What is the formula? Cost less. The residual value divided by seven years and times four years. So we get 48,000. And we can use the calculation. We must compare the cash receipt less the book value. The book value is 91,000 cost less accumulated depreciation. And you get 15,000. Now you can also use, but you have to prepare the answer in the journal entry. You can also prepare the answer in the journal entry. And this one, the calculation backup for the journal entry. First step, we must remove all machine. So credit side. Number two, we must remove the accumulated depreciation for all machine. Debit side, this one contra to the old machine. Accumulated depreciation must record it contra to the machine. Number three, we must record cash receipt. Debit side, 28,000. And the missing figure in the debit side is lost on disposal. Okay. So it is very easy for you to prepare. The journal entry, you just follow the step or you can calculate for backup the answer. Now, the next one, trade in old machine with new machine. Okay, look at the question. Trade in old machine with new machine in September 2018. And you must know we are using the yearly basis so you have to calculate from 2014 2015 16 and 17 four years only and for the year of disposal no depreciation okay this is the cost of new machine one of five thousand and given in the question trade in value for all machine is rm 35 thousand so now we just calculate using the formula and this is the formula accumulated depreciation as usual we have to calculate cost less residual value divided divided by seven years that one is useful life and this one four years just now we calculate four years only and this is the accumulated depreciation. And we must compare trade in value. This is trade in value with book value. And we find out that 
book value is bigger than trade in value so the company will get lost on this puzzle and when you prepare the journal entry we must have to prepare based on the step the first step we must remove all machine 91000 the second step we must remove accumulated depreciation of all machine the third one we must add the new machine at one of five thousand the fourth one we must pay cash and there is the formula to calculate cash the formula is the new machine less trade in value and we must pay that means we have to record in the credit side of the journal entry and the missing figure is lost on this puzzle. You must compare the debit side with the credit side. And this is the missing figure lost on this puzzle. So very easy when you want to prepare the journal entry. So better you prepare the answer in calculation first. After that, you can prepare the answer in the journal entry using these steps. All right, now the last one. This one is the basic calculation for depreciation. And I hope that all of you can calculate depreciation and you know what is the double entry and you should know how to prepare the account of depreciation and accumulated depreciation. This is the basic calculation. Okay, purchase a new machine, RM20,000 in January 2018. So this is the date of purchase and this is the cost. And this is the method we are using, straight line method. And this is the useful life, two years and no residual value. And this is the accounting period. Accounting period that means at the end of 2018, that means 31st December 2018. Now, the first one, you just record the purchase of machine, the date, January, the amount is 20,000, debit machine, credit, cash. And after that, we have to record or we have to make an adjustment for depreciation. And this is the basic calculation that you should know. Cost less residual value divided by two years and you got the answer 10,000. So debit depreciation, credit accumulated depreciation, the narration to record depreciation expense of the machine for the current year. So you can see the technique of answer is answering this question. Number one, you must know the total cost of fixed asset equal to cost plus capital expenditure or any cost that will increase the usage of the asset or will extend the useful life of asset. And number two, selling the machine, you must compare cash receipt. When you compare the cash receipt with book value, if cash receipt is bigger than book value then the company gain on disposal but if cash receive less than book value then the company get lost on disposal and you can refer to the question trade in fixed asset just now we have done we find out that book value is bigger than trade in value this is using the formula then the company will get lost on disposal. And the last question, just now we have done, when we want to purchase machine, that means we have to calculate depreciation. And we have to record depreciation at the end of the accounting period. Now we go on to question number two. Okay, question number two accounting for liabilities so given the balance 
for December 2000 or the beginning balance of 1st January 2019. So you can find out that the balance for beginning balance for account payables is RM44,000. Interest payable. And then you must know what is the terms interest payable. Interest payable mean that the interest expense had incurred but not yet paid. So you must know the meaning of interest payable. Unearned service revenue. It means that you must know the terms of unearned service revenue. It means that the company has received cash from the customer but not performed the service yet. That one is liability. Okay, the last one, long-term loan. We are borrowing or we are made loan. We made loan from the bank. And then we have to pay the interest 4% every year, 4% per annum. Now, this is the transaction that occurred during January 2000. 19. Okay, just now is the be beginning balance of January. Now, this is the transaction that incurred for the month of January. And we are calculate interest based on monthly. All right. Look at the first one. January 1st. Acquired RM35,000 bank loan. But bank loan convert to notes payable with interest rate 9% and a maturity period of 6 months. So we have to record the transaction of January. We receive cash or bank from signing notes payable. Number two. Receive another long term loans 3% with Union Bank worth RM 250,000. Yes, we receive another long term loan. The third one, January 1, issued check to settle interest payable 2018. Okay, this one, the Interest had incurred, but we have not yet paid for 5000 Now we want to pay for the interest. So it will reduce the amount of interest payable. January 12th, the pro uh, provided services to customer who has paid 10000 on 15 November 2018. This amount relate to unearned service revenue. We have received cash from customer, but we have not performed the service yet. But January 12th, we provide the services to customer. So it will reduce unearned service revenue because we have performed the services. And the last one, January 20 sold 600 units of new product on account at 55 RM55 each unit. The new products are entitled for one year warranty. So that means we are selling the product and we give a warranty to the customer. And the company company's estimation for warranty liability is 8% over sales. Replacement will be offered if the defective goods are returned with warranty period. That means that when we are, we are selling the product, we are giving warranty. So warranty expenses incurred when we make a selling a product to the customer. Now, 
you are required to prepare journal entry to record the transaction involved. All right. Now, before we continue the journal entry, we have to take five minutes for break. All right, we take five minute break for the advertisement. Semua sekolah ditutup hingga cuti akhir tahun 17 Disember 2020. Anda tak cukup bahan? Tak ada rujukan? Tak faham? Anda nak tuition tapi PKP? Jangan risau kami di Akademi Youtuber dengan kerjasama Kelab Guru Malaysia dan EDD Malaysia mengadakan kelas tuition online. Semua peringkat ada. Semuanya secara percuma. Video PDPC pun ada. Apa ditunggu lagi? Layari www.academyyoutuber.com Dibawakan kepada anda oleh Akademi Youtuber. Hello, everybody. Now I want to see the comment first before we continue with the question. Now we look at the comment. Ahmad Sufyan. Abu Kaf. Okay, this one. Need this one, the question. Kenapa jadi prepaid insurance, madam? Kalau tambah aja terus dekat total cost machinery, boleh ke? Okay, cannot. We cannot add in the cost of machinery. That one is revenue expenditure. Revenue expenditure that means the expenses that incurred every year. Every year, that one we categorize as revenue expenditure. So capital tu apa? Capital once. When you purchase the asset, it will incur once in a time or once in useful life. Okay, go on. Yang ni hello, hello, hello. So I, just, I just want to see the comment about the question. Uh, so far, hi, hi, hi je kan? Okay. So I just took, I just want to continue with my next question. So I hope that you can understand the difference between capital expenditure and revenue expenditure. So I just want to continue with my next question. Wait, huh? Mana tadi ni? Wait, uh, ada satu, another question. I have to hide this question. Okay. Okay, I wish you this one. Madam, boleh tak senaraikan capital expenditure yang lain? Okay, kalau kita purchase the fixed asset, apa-apa cost that Terlibat semasa first time kita beli dan dia akan berlaku sekali when you purchase that asset, that one is capital expenditure. Biasanya when you want to fix the asset, that one fitting, that one is capital expenditure and then you have to carry the asset to your company's shop and then that one transportation cost. Kita nak bawa asset tu ke sana kan that one sekali berlaku transportation cost installation cost that one is capital expenditure kita nak fix the asset and sometimes ada asset yang kita kena bayar sales tax okay sales tax and sometimes asset tu kalau kita dah guna a few years and then you want to renovate the renovation cost to capital expenditure and the vehicle when you want to paint to look new and if it will increase the useful life of asset atau dalam bahasa Melayu dia meningkatkan 
the capacity of asset that one is capital asset okay another one yeah i think this is the last one after that i want to continue macam mana nak identify soalan na yearly basis or month or oh, this one is monthly basis okay that one is for is that for depreciation ke or for interest okay for interest you based on the question they will mention the month of january for the month of january 2000 that one is monthly but if you are required to calculate interest per annum the term per annum that one represent for one year normally the question will specific specify whether monthly or yearly kalau for depreciation for the i answer for depreciation the question also mention which one is monthly or yearly okay okay now we continue nanti i will answer another question so we continue with the next question for this is past year question yeah? so i hope that you really understand for these three topic okay now how do you know that that one we are calculate monthly okay given in the question actually um in the question dia ada mention nanti i will show you first i want to answer for the first question prepare journal entry to record the transaction so you must refer to the date given here so how many transaction you can look at the question you have one two three four five there are five transaction and you must record based on the date given in the in the list all right now look at number one so we receive check from bank debit bank credit notes payable make sure you write down the correct item notes payable not loan because we have signed from loan to notes payable the amount 35000 and then you must write down the narration to record a loan by signing a 6 month notes payable the second transaction we receive check the amount is 250000 50000 so debit bank credit long term loan so this one long term loan make sure you write down the correct term okay the third transaction and then the narration is to record a long term loan with union bank okay this one before that we have the list from 2018 december 2018 interest expense not paid yet and we are paying the interest at january 1st so it will reduce our liability so debit interest payable credit bank the amount is 5000 we must refer the balance given in the question the 12 one Okay this one you must know what is the meaning of unearned service revenue unearned service revenue that mean we receive cash from customer but we have not performed the service yet so now the date for 12 we have performed the service and it will reduce our liability so debit unearned service 10000 and credit service revenue so service revenue represent for revenue it will increase the revenue okay this one relate to the 
warranty expenses when we make sales on credit to the customer we have to record the warranty ex transaction the first uh, set of transaction debit account receivable 33000 credit sales 33,000 and at the same date 20th of January we must record debit warranty expense 2,640 credit warranty payable 2,640 we must estimate the amount of warranty expense warranty payable mean that we are that, no, we, it means that there is liability. The customer not claim for the defect of the product. Okay, now just now the student asked about the interest, whether we want to calculate monthly or yearly. Okay, in the question, you are required to prepare the adjusting entries on 31st January 2019. So the question asks you to calculate interest for one month only. So this is the answer. We have three liabilities and we have to calculate three items with different formula. The first one, notes payable. 35,000 given in the question just now, given 9% and multiplied by one month. We have to take one month because in the question, you are required to make an adjustment. So adjustment for one month only. Because 9%, this one represent for one year. So you must Take only one month divided by 12 months. And normally we take two decimal points. So the answer is 262.50 cents. The second one, we have to calculate long-term loan also for one month. How do you know one month? Because given in the question, adjusting. Adjusting, that means we have to adjust for one month. The amount is 250,000 times 3% times one month, one month from 12 months. You got 625. And the last one, long term loan, you must calculate separately because the interest rate is given with the different amount. And also the principal given with the different amount. And when calculate this one, you must total up for all interest and the total is 1387.50 cent so to record interest expand for the current year okay what is the conclusion that you can get from this question the most important thing you must know the the liability, short term liability, and you must know the terms of liabilities. So you must know how to calculate interest expense when you are borrowing from long term loan or you are signing notes payable. So what is the technique of answering the question based on this question? Okay, not normal question. This one is quite uh, special because you are asked to calculate only one month. Normally, in the question, it no depends on the question. Sometimes we are uh, ask you to calculate for sixty days. So that means you have to calculate sixty days divided by three six five days for interest. And sometimes the interest asks you to calculate five months. Five months. You must divide it by 
12 months because the interest rate represent for one year. So when you want to answer the question, you must be very careful, read the question. What is the question ask you to complete? Yeah? Okay, you must know long-term loan when we are borrowing from bank, then there will be interest expense for this question for monthly. Depends on the question. And you must know what is the meaning of unearned service revenue. When we pay or we, when we perform the service, unearned revenue will reduce because it converts to service revenue. And the last one, sold goods on credit, there is estimation for warranty liability. Depends on the policy of the company. So you must read the question. When you want to answer the question, this one is only the guideline only. Whatever the guideline I give to you, you must read the question. Sometimes the question is different from my answer. This one, we refer to the question. So this is the guideline for you, how to calculate interest. And the last one, Okay, question number three, accounting for incomplete record. In the question, it will give you the first one, cash book, the debit side and the credit side. Always you look at the balance brought forward for or the beginning balance for cash book and the ending balance for cash book. Sometimes you have to calculate the ending balance of cash book. So look at the question given the cash book and be the beginning of asset and liability. You must identify which one is asset. So this one asset equipment, asset cash, asset inventory, asset and a comparable liability. And this is the beginning of the asset and liability. And this is the ending balance. Okay, you can see that the question mark. It means that you have to calculate the ending balance of cash. What is the formula? The formula is the beginning balance. This is the beginning balance at or plus cash receipt less cash payment then you will get this answer you always must always be careful for ending balance because the question not give the ending balance of cash you have to calculate the amount okay this is the additional information depreciation you have to calculate depreciation unpaid liabilities it means that this is Utilities that had been incurred but not yet paid. So this is part of current expenses. And purchase a motorcycle RM4000. And we purchase by applying loan. When we applying loan, apply loan, we have to calculate interest rate because we are applying loan. So given the interest per annum, okay, you see this one per annum, but we have to calculate interest based on per annum. We have to calculate interest starting from 1st April. April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. So that one, we have to calculate how many months. Okay, this one you have to calculate depreciation for a motorcycle and analysis. We are using the analysis method. So you can see from the question, it will give you cash book, the beginning balance of asset and liability, the ending balance of asset and liability. And the last one, it will give you additional information. Additional information normally relate to double entry system. 
Okay, now prepare the statement of profit or loss. Before we prepare profit or loss, you must know the technique of answering the question. So you can see the beginning balance of asset and liability given in the question, the ending balance given in the question, cash book, beginning, cash receipt, cash payment given in the question. But you have to calculate ending balance. So I just give you the formula beginning balance plus cash receipt less cash payment then you got the ending balance and the additional information given just now this transaction or this item represent for the transaction for example number one depreciation that means debit depreciation credit accumulated depreciation unpaid debit utilities expenses credit utilities payable interest debit interest expense depends on the question topic we have only eight months you have to calculate yeah? eight months and then credit interest expense credit cash i don't know whether the buyer or not depends on the question okay this one you have to calculate depreciation debit depreciation credit accumulated so all the additional information represent for the transaction or double entry system. Okay, this one is the step of preparing financial statement. So you have to open account receivable. But in this question, not given the account receivable. We have to calculate sales credit. Account payable, we have to calculate purchase on credit. And we have to make an adjustment in the question just now utilities expense salaries expense interest expense we have to make an adjustment and then we have to calculate depreciation and we have to calculate opening capital based on the beginning balance of assets and liabilities and then we have to prepare statement of income last one we must prepare financial position normally the student can get full mark when from financial position the total asset non-current asset plus current asset equals to owner's equity plus non-current asset plus current you know non-current liabilities plus current liability so if you get the amount equal it means that you have done correctly for your analysis but if you make a mistake or not balance for this part you must check the analysis for all these account especially for expenses and revenue now after we make an analysis this one we call reconstruction of general ledger. That means we have to make an adjustment for certain general ledger. General ledger means the accounts. Okay. Uh, this is the answer for profit or loss. Okay, sales you can get from cash book no credit sale the beginning no beginning inventory okay for the purchase purchase credit this represent for account payable plus cash purchase then you got the total 5660 then you got cogaf cogaf cost of goods available for sale less ending inventory inventory given in the question and then you got cost of goods sold then this is the amount for gross profit okay now just now we calculate we have to calculate for depreciation given in the question from 
additional information. 5,630 times 10% given in the additional information. So you have to calculate the depreciation. You got 563. This one, we purchase motorcycle. The amount we make loan, the amount is 4,000 times 10% times twice. And no, nine months. Just now we purchased, I think, starting from uh, the date from April. Yes, April until December. So we just calculate nine months only for depreciation. And salaries, expenses, we just get from cash book. Rent, expense from cash book. The amount is 1400 and you have to make an adjustment for utilities expense. This one from cash book, the amount, and you have to add the utilities not paid yet, but had incurred, but not yet paid. So we have to add the amount 500. Just now mentioned in the question. And you got the total 1500. The total for Operating expenses 9763, and this is the total operating income. Okay, and less other expenses just now. Operating expenses this one is other expenses, we refer the interest expense. 4,000 times 4% 4 times 9 months. Just now we purchased the motor and we are applying loan. So the amount, you must calculate only 9 months only, okay? So the amount is 120. So you got net profit 5,757. And this one, actually we have to prepare uh, the beginning capital first or you can prepare after statement of income also can because we have to add the beginning capital in the financial position. So this is the answer for beginning capital. You look at in the question given beginning asset. You have only two asset and don't forget to record cash. So the total 18,410 less the account payable 750. So this is the total for beginning capital. Okay, the last one. So this is the last one and it is very easy for you to check your answer in order to get full mark. You have the time to check your answer. When you cannot get the balance for asset equals to liabilities plus owner's equity, you must check your analysis of the account. And this is the statement of financial position given in the question equipment less accumulated depreciation. This one based on the additional information you have calculated just now. So you got this amount, motorcycle 4,000 less accumulated depreciation based on the additional information. Then you got the total current asset, non-current asset 8,767. Then this one is very important, very, very important because you have to calculate the ending balance of cash. And this is the formula, beginning balance plus cash receipt less cash payment because not given in the question. And then you have to add inventory, the total for current asset 20,130. So this is the total asset 28,897. You must check your answer for total asset with the total owner's equity plus total liabilities. Okay, this is the answer for 
owners' equity. Beginning capital, just now we calculate plus net profit that you have calculated from statement of income, less drawing from the given in the question, and then you got the ending capital, 23,117. Loan, 4,000. That one we purchased motorcycle just now. We make loan. And then we have to pay. Yes, this one is interest payable. We have to pay interest for the loan that we have made. Account payable. You look at the ending balance of account payable and utilities payable. It means that the utilities had incurred but not yet paid. That one is liability. We must record in current liability. So you total up the amount for ending capital with total current liability and your answer is 28,897. So equals to your total asset. That means your answer has correct, had the correct answer. That means your analysis for general ledger you have done correctly and your beginning capital you have done correctly. That's all for this topic. So I just discussed for topic 9, 10, and 11. We have discussed already. Hope that you can understand and you can visit my channel, YouTube, Cikgu Yati channel. And don't forget to subscribe, like, and share so that you, so that you can get new notification when I produce new video. So, that's all for today. Okay. Before you leave this uh, program, uh, saya nak beritahu uh, ada link, ya, link CJ. So, saya harap semoga ilmu yang saya sampaikan tadi dapat memberi manfaat kepada semua pelajar pra university terutamanya pelajar matrikulasi yang akan menduduki PSPM for tomorrow dan saya doakan pelajar-pelajar yang hadir pada hari ini akan dapat menjawab soalan dengan mudah dan senang dan A for your account. Jadi diucapkan tahniah kepada pelajar yang setia menunggu sehingga 10:30 hari ini ya. Bagus ya. Dan jangan lupa link CJ boleh dapatkan link CJ pada bahagian chat dah ada ke belum ah link CJ ha, dan jangan lupa uh, bila saya bagi link CJ tu um, jangan lupa kamu mesti ada email EDD dan lagi satu masukkan link CJ dan juga kod SS saya rasa saya dah bagi kod Hmm, kejap ya, saya tengok. Uh, link sijil ini, kamu kena link sijil ni akan tamat setengah jam selepas live. So, make sure saya, ni link sijil ni ya, kejap. Sekejap ya, saya masuk link sijil. Okey, ni link sijil. Okey. Nah, saya saja ni supaya kamu boleh buat. Sebab kalau saya tamatkan lepas 30 minit nanti dia tak valid lagi ya. Dan bila kamu nak apply link sijil ni, make sure kamu ada ada email account. EDD. Lepas kamu masuk link sijil EDD, jangan lupa ada kod access. Okay, this one link CJ. Ha, ni saya bagi kod SS. Ha, ni kelas IUEDD. Ha, bila kamu berjaya membuka EDD dan berjaya masuk link dan akhirnya kamu masukkan kod SS, akhirnya kamu akan dapat CJ. Siapa yang tak dapat isi link CJ tu maknanya pelajar tidak membuka email EDD lagi ya. Okey, saya rasa tu saja. Saya dah bagi semua. 
Uh, untuk baca komen, hmm, ada pelajar tak dapat, so dia relate dengan application for your EDD. EDD ni ambil masa satu hari untuk proses ya. Okay, saya rasa setakat itu saja. Yang lain tu, saya tengok yang penting saja. Yang lain. Okay, yang ni saya tunjuk yang satu ni. Siapa yang tak boleh si link CJ tu maknanya tak ada EDD account ni. Okay, saya show yang one one more. Kalau Sarah kira dekat satu bahagian, comprehensive income statement, semua salah ke? Eh, tak. Kalau kamu salah kira bahagian utilities, kamu still dapat markah for your sale, masih lagi dapat markah for your purchase, tapi cuma kamu salah bahagian net profit. Ha, sebab net profit tu dia punya flow from sale, less cost of goods sold, less the operating expenses, kamu akan dapat net profit. Kamu akan salah bahagian the expenses dengan net profit. Yang lain tu still dapat markah. Dia tidak membahayakan. Maknanya still dapat markah for other working. Okay. Okay, saya rasa itu saja ya. Hmm, ada lagi ke soalan yang saya hanya ambil yang relate? Okay, ni painting. Painting, yes. Painting or lettering tu kalau tak silap capital expenditure. Yes, that is true. Painting tu dia akan menyebabkan you the asset look new. So it will increase the useful life of asset. Yes, that is true, betul. Okay, last one ya. Yeah. Soalan ni, kalau tulis explanation pendek-pendek je boleh ke? Macam to record payment or to record interest. <coughs> to record payment tu terlalu general. You must specific. For example, to record notes. Payment for notes payable. Pendek, tambah sikit je. Tambah sikit je. Two sentence. Okay, boleh tu. To record interest. Interest tu pun tambah sikit. Expand. Sikit je satu perkataan kan. Senang je kan. Okay, saya rasa setakat itu je. So, kamu boleh ambil link CJ just now saya bagi. Dan saya uh, maka dengan habisnya tadi. Maka habislah ya. Okay, jadi link CJ tu akan temu, uh, tampak. Uh, Tamat tempo setengah jam sebab saya nak stop live ni. Jangan lupa sila subscribe dan sila tekan butang merah Cikgu Yati channel sebab jika kamu subscribe saya, kamu akan dapat new notification setiap kali saya produce my video. Okay. Dan untuk pengetahuan semua, pelajar-pelajar boleh tonton semula YouTube ini melalui link yang disediakan di portal IU. So, sila layari ke portal www.academyyoutuber.com untuk dapatkan info terkini dan jadual kelas tuition. Jadi, semoga kita mendapat manfaat daripada kelas-kelas yang dijalankan ya. Jadi, saya rasa setakat itu. Jadi, saya doakan kepada semua pelajar supaya dapat menjawab soalan PSPM for your paper account tomorrow. Dan saya doakan semua pelajar dapat A for your account. So setakat itu saja. Sekian terima kasih dan jumpa lagi. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Okay, yang tu saya dah baca semua. So iklan kita dah pun berakhir. Terima kasih semua. Tuition online percuma. Tuition online percuma. Layari www.academyyoutuber bagi mengikuti tuition online secara percuma. Prasekolah, sekolah rendah, sekolah menengah. Semua ada di Academy Youtuber. Rujuk jadual di laman sesawang www.academyyoutuber.com Semoga masa terluang anak-anak anda diisi dengan sebaiknya. Dibawakan kepada anda oleh Academy Youtuber.